Welcome back to Nightmind, friends. And welcome to, honestly, one of the craziest solar flares. Well, you know what, let's keep it on theme and call it a lunar flare. I don't care if it doesn't make any scientific sense. One of the craziest lunar flare situations in online horror. The Backrooms Found Footage Video. If you don't know about it by now, don't worry because we're going to get into it. But just to catch you up quickly, this is a found footage short film creation by Kane Pixels, who uploaded it on January 7th, 2022, and received a shockwave of views so fast that you think a pop star just dropped a new music video. In three weeks, three weeks, it picked up over 9,600,000 views. And for good reason. This video of the Backrooms took an old viral horror concept and brought it to life in one of the most visually believable, terrifying, and well-crafted presentations you could ever dream of. The 9 minute, 13 second video opens with the default screen you would see at the start of a videotape, and we find ourselves on the set of an amateur film, but not that amateur, as a clapboard appears to mark the footage. Scene 7A, take 4, with the date of what seems to be July 4th, 1991. It's a short scene with a small but attentive crew. Alright, cut! Cut! That was good. That was good, guys. Alright, uh, that was good. I'm thinking we get a wide angle, and then we're done. Okay? Alright? Yeah, cool. cool. Like, how much further? Like, uh, a little more. Right. A little more. You got Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! With no explanation or evidence as to how it happened, the camera operator slipped through a hole in reality, appearing in the back rooms. The title card is granted to us, as well as the creator's full name, Kane Parsons. And it's here that I'm going to tell you that if you want the full, raw experience, you should absolutely engage in it. Really, watch the original video, at least the original video, even if you don't watch any of the following material. If you'd like to watch all the content that currently exists, which clocks in at around just 20 minutes right now, I have a playlist for you in the video description below. My playlist timeline is in the order of uploads, which is in contrast to the official playlist from Kane Pixels at the moment, because really, starting with the full backroom short film is the jumping in point everyone should have, and Kane's playlist is according to narrative timeline. Seriously though, go see this. I'll wait for you here. Subscribe to Nightmind if you haven't yet so you can keep tabs on getting back here, and return after watching the backrooms at the very least. We've got a lot to talk about with this project. All set? See, I told you it was worth watching in full. So, you know the deal. The camera operator, who appears to be Kane from the credentials on the clapboard, explores the infamous liminal space the internet knows as the back rooms, coming across more and more variations of the same yellow labyrinth. No one else seems to exist in this place, but evidence does emerge of previous wanderers, like the ladder leading to a tunnel between areas, and arrows drawn on the walls. Following the markings brings Kane to a wall with graffiti, Drawings, ramblings we can't discern, handprints. One section says, God, followed by writing that can't be interpreted from all the camera movements. And, in the center, a clear message. With a monster appearance like that, it's more than likely that Kane walked into a trap. As he runs, it gives chase, crying out and sounds almost human. Here, listen closely. Kane's movement takes him into a new liminal space, presenting a tough choice. Left, up, or forward. He takes the stairs and explores the area, giving us plenty of shots inside this unbelievable world. In time, he ends up in what seems like an abandoned art exhibit, and then comes across the most jaw-dropping moment in the short film so far. What the fuck? What the fuck? This isn't real. This isn't real. I'll interject here. For the ability to create a scene like that alone, this video deserved to go viral. All of the footage we've seen so far is incredible, but that scene? 
outstanding technical ability. Kane soon finds a staircase that leads back to the original backroom's area and the danger it presents. There are a few things we can replay here and really enjoy, but do you remember a moment ago when I said this was the most visually stunning scene? This ending, the camera falling from the sky, is its equal. I'm in awe of the abilities of this creator and all that's gone into the short film. And now, since we have the tools to do so, let's take a moment to examine that monster. From the shots we're given, it is so difficult to gauge what exactly this thing is. The best shot I can provide is here. And looking at its head, if you can call this a head, it looks slightly like a distorted skull, as if it's been stretched out with the jaw pulled over to the left. The entire creature looks like it's made of cables or some sort of metal twisted out of a previously humanoid shape or twisted to slightly resemble one. The still images you can take are fascinating. They invite you to keep scrubbing through frames, looking for clues, trying to make sense of whatever this is. In the video description, we have a different date than what was written on the clapboard at the beginning of the film, September 23rd, 1996. My guess is that this is when the video camera was recovered, which means the in-universe version of Kane stayed missing for over five years after falling into the backrooms. There's a distinct time anomaly between that reality and this one. And of course, we have that unlisted YouTube link, leading us to the upload, March 11th, 1990 archive.tar. A TAR file represents an archive created by a Unix utility named TAR, meant for packing files together for distribution. It came into use in 1979, and the name means Tape Archive. In this video, we're informed the data on the file is inaccessible. It reformats as we watch, loads the archive, and presents us with an image from a liminal space. A shot of circuitry follows, then another strange area filled with water, followed by a photo of somebody working on old machinery with a censored face. They're joined shortly by another person attending to some technology, shots of what seemed to be a computer lab in the process of setup, and our final photo of someone working. This man at a computer, recording the scene in front of him. The backrooms. An overlay image of a shot in the backrooms is shown. It's not easy to read the note associated with Null Zone 4, but you can make out quite a few words with enough replays. The best translation I can offer after studying the message is this. Due to the elevation discrepancy between panel 225 and 224, a small field is created. There's a word between small and field, but the letters aren't defined enough to make a sensible guess. Of the first part though, I am certain. An elevation discrepancy between panel 225 and 224. This archive upload informs us of a lot immediately. The backrooms are known to a group of people, they're being studied, and it's possible that this space has been manufactured, not discovered. The discrepancy between panels 225 and 224 may also be to blame for Kane slipping into the reality. The next video, the third test, is marked in the video description as dating back to July 2nd, 1988. The footage shows us diagrams of a device with visual overlays of the actual construction, all while music and narration play. That narration is difficult to interpret, but closed captions have been provided. On July 2nd, 1988, the Async Research Facility tested its low-proximity magnetic distortion system for the third time. Details regarding the results of the experimentation have not yet been released. During a press conference held in April of 1988, Ivan Beck, Vice Director of the Async Foundation, described the intention of these tests, stating that the program, if granted sufficient backing from the United States government, will offer a solution to all current and future storage and residential needs, and save billions of dollars on property construction and management. We're then presented with video footage from that day within the facility.
did we just witness? We know this is the third test of the equipment, but what was the aim of the machinery? From what it sounds like, the Async Foundation may know that liminal space reality is real, or could very well be manufactured, and this facility exists to access or create it. The idea presents an opportunity of providing humanity with the means to fabricate space in the world. The crafting of real, new, physical space where it once hadn't existed, and with all the materials inside necessary for modern civilization. Such a thing would be a discovery to surpass even the revelations of nuclear technology. Here we have footage from the Async facility that appears involved in achieving that goal. First contact arrived after the test footage, a video from October 17th, 1989, according to the video description. And yes, there is another unlisted link, but we'll get to that after addressing the events here. We're given a warning about unauthorized distribution, exhibition, etc. of the following tape, and provided the Async branding. Test number six is underway, under an apparent code name. We're shown a series of cylindrical devices at work, then provided a modifications list. The majority of this information is above our understanding, but some redactions are presented in red. We've been around long enough to know that redacted information is the best kind, and we should get clues about what was censored soon enough. A screen flashes by, the information mirrored. BNCH forward slash BY equals 8000, and three counts of failure, at first glance, that code looks like the end of a YouTube URL, but its presence in the video would defy the logic presented so far in the series, and the sequence doesn't fit the requirement to finish a URL. Let's keep that info aside for now. There's a flash of a diagram, this one more sophisticated than the previous, and footage from the facility conducting operations. So, here we have it. This is when the world of the backrooms met this reality, and the employees at Async knew something was wrong, an obstruction they weren't aware of. This obstruction may be a physical aspect of the liminal space, but it's more than likely our monster. As for that unlisted video attached to this one, it leads to an upload titled Collateral, showing a series of news reports on the same day, October 17th, known as the Day of the Great San Francisco Earthquake of 89. It was a 6.9 magnitude quake that killed 67 people, knocked out power, started fires, and caused over $5 billion in damage. That system failure might have brought the backrooms to the Async facility, but the destruction that it wreaked on the state of California was historic. And, as we're about to witness, the aftershocks kept coming. The video Missing Persons was uploaded January 28, 2022, and the description provided the date of February 3, 1990. A series of missing posters are shown to us. Nicholas Bolton, Margaret Watson, a man whose name isn't given, Ellis White, and Janice Scott. A chart is shown representing the trend of missing person cases from 1987 to 1993, with the incident from October 17, 1989 marked in blue. After the incident at Async, the number skyrocketed. A bloody, horrifying uphill climb with a clear future prediction as more and more people slipped into the back rooms, all from different places. Video is presented from February 3rd, 1990 inside the facility as async personnel in biohazard suits explore the back rooms, connected to the entrance by a tether. It's not long before they make a discovery.
I kind of assume this down. It may just be part of the environment. Put a missile to the to be a complete review. This makes no sense. This wasn't in the last report. No, this is this is definitely new. There's it's, it's organic. Be some kind of fungus. The ending is certainly unexpected. A message in reverse that says, if anybody, blame him. The remarks of the acing personnel are worthy of note. Organic, some kind of fungus. And then we're given what look like microscope photos. The timing of the message after this might be significant. Who are we blaming and for what? Are we blaming the man found in the back rooms? Is a study of the material coating his body something we should blame him for in the future? We actually have a clue that may tie into this, and it's through the coffee page for Kane Pixels. The monster in question is labeled Bacteria, which gives us a new way of thinking about the creature and what it does to its victims. If this man was killed by a monster called Bacteria, and Async took examples of the residue on the body into this side of reality, that spells some very bad news. It also gives us a better idea of what we're seeing in these frames, and just how horrifying this story might become. When the Backrooms short film first appeared, that's all it seemed to be. An astounding short film project utilizing a quick viral horror concept that circulated over a year ago. But with the follow-up videos that Kane has crafted, it's clear that this is a narrative series. And it is, by far, the most impressive found footage horror project to come online in years. I am not joking. There is very little that touches this caliber of work. I'm actually reminded that this is the same way that Marble Hornets came into being. A horror concept got popular online, sparked some imaginations, and from it, we received a series that changed the very course of online creativity, making a landmark in the history of unfiction with such popularity that it bled into mainstream awareness. The Backrooms was just another viral concept online too, spread around like wildfire, and look what we have now. A shot to the jaw in the form of the Backroom series, which hits so hard and so strong that you're left spinning. I'll say it right now, this is going to be remembered as one of the greats. It needs to continue telling its story, and it must stick the landing in the finale. But already, for what it's done, this is historic. This is an anomaly of quality and technical skill the likes of which we never see. This is an online project that, in all honesty, belongs in the VHS franchise of films. And if it had been there, VHS would have benefited from its inclusion. It's not a magic trick to figure out how this was all done, either. The environments were crafted in Blender, the 3D modeling program, with what are clearly the best visual overlays that you could ever hope to find or make, rendering 3D environments realistic and making them look like they were recorded on tape. I can't even fathom what the specs on the PC used to make this look like, because I know how many hours of rendering had to be involved, and to pump out all of this in a short time, that's a lot of computer time baking. But making the camera look like there was actual human movement throughout, making composites with the sound, and especially composites for the latest video, which really does seem like live action incorporated into 3D, it's just astounding. I would really love to see a making a video after all this is done, just to let the world in and inform people what it took. I am thrilled that this exists, and I'm in awe that it exists. I am thoroughly impressed. On a technical level and a presentation level, this series stands alone and the atmosphere and scares in the short film are so good. Do not cheat yourself. Subscribe to Kane Pixels, watch for new uploads, and stay on the ride. This is something truly special, and I want to come back when it's all over to examine the whole breadth of it. But until that finale, I'm following this with a passion, and I advise you to do the same. That's all for tonight, everyone. If you're as impressed with the Backroom series as I am, do bear in mind that Kane has a coffee. So, go on, buy him a coffee, keep that kid in stock on caffeine to keep running while he builds the rest of the series. He more than deserves it. Thanks to Kane Pixels for bringing the backrooms to life and expanding on it to include a whole engaging narrative. Thanks to all of you for watching, and thanks to my supporters on Patreon, who enabled me to pay for the surgery needed to reattach my jaw after my first backrooms viewing. 
If you'd like to support the work I do on Nightmind and the Nightmind Index for new and emerging unfiction projects, and, I don't know, guarantee some financial peace of mind while I spend a year or so to upgrade everything of mine made in Blender after being absolutely humiliated by this guy's skill level, <laughs> you can join the Patreon for as little as $2 a month, which also gets your name in the credits at the end of all major videos. It really, truly does make a difference in my life and my ability to do consistent work, and I appreciate it immensely. If you can't chip into the Patreon, but you want to do something anyway, why not just subscribe to Nightmind? It really does help a lot, and it means you won't miss out on Nightmind uploads in your subscription feed. And yes, I am kidding about taking major time off to upgrade my skills in Blender. I can barely stand to be away from you all for even a month without an upload unless I'm working on something big. Don't worry. <laughs> Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening, and thanks for joining me on a visit to the back rooms. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and I'll be seeing you again real soon. Sleep tight. <laughs>